На рынке кибербезопасности происходит... На рынке кибербезопасности Hello. IT, и... <coughs> IT and information security in the conditions of sanctions. Что вы видите? What do you see? What really happens in the market? Okay, let's begin with you. Да, последние, наверное, несколько месяцев. Recent several months. Изменения. We see active changes. За зарубежные игроки уходят. And foreign players leaving. A country and they leave opportunities of using their products and services on the side of the client. This is the main pain that we hear from our clients, and this is the main thing which is flying in the air. <coughs> and those technologies which are used by the clients are becoming unuseful. And this is, to my point of view, the main reason and a consequence of these sanctions. Because of this, the first thing that the client has on his side, they start looking at how can this be replaced, which domestic products and solutions can be used. Speaking about the hardware component, software component, what can be used to replace them? Speaking about the direction of their movement, speaking about clients, right now we see the first focus of those clients on critical elements of the infrastructure and critical IT services, uh, information security services, which have to be viable and which have to be protected and they should protect company and should provide cyber security on the side of the company so we are focusing in this direction and I think this is a very good trend on the side of the clients and not distribution but you know focusing on the most important things as for information security depends on IT technology and IT technology also goes through a number of technological changes. Uh, some of them become unavailable or difficult to use. Clients have a number of similar problems and questions which make them search for alternatives. And it is very important to specify that we can divide all the technology services and products in IT and information security into three main categories. Category number one, we have sufficient number of analogies and you can go to the market and you can immediately see uh, taking the domestic technology the one which can be used the second one there is one maximum two products in these type of technologies and from this point of view like uh, in the lack of products you can use whatever is available or you should wait or maybe you should invent alternative solutions and number three those technologies products and services which are not available in the market and uh, there are three types of products so clients are making their own priorities first two priorities are the priorities where you can find a solution and close your gap and category number three is the most vulnerable one. And from this point of view, we see that there is a certain market trend to add new products and technologies. And we hear from a number of clients that, well, Turkish manufacturer or some other alternative manufacturer makes those products who is ready to offer, maybe not ideal, maybe below average solution. However, it's going to close and cover the existing gap. Misha, how do you see those changes in the market? Well, I'm looking at a totally different segment than my colleagues. These are CM solutions. And speaking about CM solutions, 
<coughs> an obvious trend of import substitution and it did not impact us very significantly because the industry and CM systems in particular, they are moving on those rails and they work very successfully in this direction. In the course of the recent year, all the projects, approximately 80% of the projects that we've been dealing and competing with, these were domestic solutions. So we see less and less of Western players and right now we see even less of those. Yes, of course, in recent three months, the number of requests for pilots for substitution of Western vendors have increased by the fourfold. That's the official statistics. And CM systems, irrespectively to the situation that most of them were domestic and we have not we don't have to replace any one of them, but if you will look superficially at these CM systems are the tools which don't work by themselves and they depend on data and data sources, events, uh, sources of uh, TI feeds or the GOIP databases. And there's a lot of options like that, and this system works, and it gives very good results. Without them, it's impossible. So import substitution of these dependencies is the main direction of our operations. All the EM systems, they stop working because the clients and our claw, uh, they don't have the products, uh, the sources of events, which were being the sources of events. And this is the key problem right now, because replacing these products, well, it's very problematic to replace them by current solutions, because as we can see it right now on the market, there are certain domestic analogies of these uh, systems, but very often they don't have any logging. All this logging does not allow them to detect attacks or prevent those attacks. That's why this is a big problem. And this is what we're speaking about in the course of the next two days on our stand. Well, speaking about numbers and statistics and statistical trends. According to your assessment, looking at the recent events, do you expect growth, drop, or maybe a steady development on the same level, on the same condition of the IT market and information security market? We're speaking about market in general or a certain segment. Yeah, we can divide it. We can divide it. Because it's interesting, how do you look at the IT market, uh, cybersecurity market, and its separate segments? Well, in our portfolio, we have five different products, each and in every niche. We can speak about them separately, but if you look at it generally, our vision of the information security market, generally it's going to drop. The market is going to shrink because most of the products were solutions uh, from like firewalls and number of other similar and technological products which became unavailable. So replenishing this volume of the market which was present uh, presented by foreign products. Don't we have our own firewalls? Of course we do. Of course we do have them. But it's gonna, not going to be possible to satisfy all the clients who previously used... Uh, well, if it's, if it's, if it's going to be a queue and you can sell the same product to all of them, but still, still. Different products, they have different technologies and it's impossible to realize the whole functionality in one product. Well, one client have used from one vendor, another have used from another vendor, and they've been choosing these vendors because of certain functional peculiarities in the facilities. So there's a certain functional peculiarities. It's impossible to bring it in one or even two, three products in a short period of time. That's why, even with consideration of what is available from the product and technological point of view, it's impossible to sell it to all the products. I'm not speaking about our products. Yes, we are going to be able to do that, and uh, everything's going to be all right with our products. But generally speaking, speaking about the market players, I think that information security market players, they are going to see certain growth because we see product substitution and replacement and demand is going to grow. But how much it's going to grow? Single percentages, dozens of percentages, or it's going to be radical growth? Dozens of percentages. Dozens of percentage points. Why? Well, it's a simple technology. The client had a budget. And in this budget, they had a cluster of products 
which they had to spend for foreign analogies. They did not spend it. They redistribute the budget and they buy, buy something they had to buy in a year or two and they put it in a higher priority. Especially speaking about our technologies, uh, some of our products, for example, deception systems, uh, they are not initial products for them in the class of these products. So we have planned in a year or two to buy them and client puts it on a higher priority and they come to us, they ask us, and this is how our market is growing. The client does not spend the whole budget on this. And generally speaking, well, everybody gets their own advantage. <coughs> Misha, you wanted to add something? Yes, I wanted to remind all our dear clients that, first of all, they are buying products not for the functionality, but for solving their own problems. And we have to remember about it right now, because no matter what you think, there are Russian analogies and you have to forget about the absence of certain functionality, but this will allow you to solve this problem here and now. The problem of non allowing these uh, unallowable and impossible events. And I would like to continue this topic by saying in the beginning there was a hype of demand when everything happened in February, March. And this can be described by a phrase as the tough import substitution. And I'm speaking only about our small CM solution segment. And of course, everybody who's been following Western CM systems and they didn't want to do that because they've been satisfied with all of these. And these are reminders, these remaining 20% who stayed in Western CM systems. <coughs> they started speaking with the market, they started getting interested in how can they replace all of this. But then they got peaceful and many decided to stay with what whatever they've used and decided to move this question a year ahead or two years ahead. But nevertheless, this market, especially if we're speaking about CM systems market, is going to grow. And I think it's going to grow by dozens or a couple of dozens of percentages. But right now it's too early to speak about it. Which market segments do you expect will grow the fastest? I'm speaking about cybersecurity market. The fastest growing segment will be... Endpoint. I think it's going to be a networking part of the security systems. And we'll see more and more manufacturers, so firewalls. There should be some substitutions. Yeah, firewalls, okay. CM, I don't think CM market is very definite and everything's very well understandable. Players are very well understandable. I'm not going to argue with it. Yes, I also wanted to say that networking security related with firewalls and other IPS, IDS topics will be on the horse because it was the biggest market by volume and very strong and big players left this market and they have to be substituted. So firewalls, CMs, endpoints, endpoint will also grow. Not so strong <coughs> because we had foreign players who been present on the market. There will be certain growth and substitution. What else? I think there's going to be the growth of specialized solutions uh, which were weakly represented in the Russian market, for example, load balancers, mm -hmm. container protection systems, some specialized solutions which were not presented by Russian products. Well, they are producing something like that, but they are not available. So this part of the market, this is something new that is being born in the market and created in the market, and we'll see a lot of new products. So everything related with network security and other new directions and web application protection, DDoS attack protection, I think this will be key and the hardest topic. What do you think the decree of the president uh, uh, from the May 1st, which makes uh, the company to have responsible people inside of the companies for the cybersecurity? Another decree related to the fact that before 2025, everybody should switch to Russian software products in the area of informational security. Will this influence the changes of the market, of everything would happen by itself. Two and a half years. 
In the course of two and a half years, we one can produce the first working version, industrial working version of the product. So those technologies which are missing and products, foreign products which are being used uh, and where there's no Russian analogies for this period of time, of course, we should have Russian analogies. And this will be the first versions, first industrial versions. Two and a half years, it's the period when the first industrial version will be produced. <clears throat> so for these products, it's going to be reinforcement because it's a small market. I'm speaking about specialized products. And uh, if not for this degree, the meaning of creating this small market, well, maybe it's better for you to fight for the CM market or maybe for the endpoint market. That's why in the framework of these specialized segments, uh, it's going to be a driver or catalyzer as for other products. Generally speaking, we do see growth, we see competition, and this competition makes uh, improvement of the products. That's why in half of these segments, even more than half of these segments of products, we see analogies and they will become of better quality. And this is the second driver, which makes me think. I think this is another impact for security, for the sake of security. And then we'll come to the situation that security should be understandable, cognitive, uh, understandable by the heads of the companies. And finally, it's going to be good for the market, it's going to be good for the business and for the country in general. So basically speaking, it's going to be, from one side, it's going to be positive, And on the other side, possibly it's going to be, well, there will be certain difficulties. Uh, we have seen some of those. And just for the sake of it, I would like to add that right now, <clears throat> we have to search for responsible people because we miss people on the market. We don't have enough people. We have the hunger for people on this market, for specialists. And we have to start thinking differently. Previously, you were taking foreign and Russian and you've been building security. You've been solving problems and cases. Right now, you have to be creative. How can you connect things which are inconnectable, especially from the product point of view and from this position? From this point of view, you will divide this. Well, I think this is a negative side of this coin. So you have to move fast. And sometimes it's very difficult to do it on a good quality level. Well, today, during the different interview, we've been speaking about global leaders in the area of development of informational security products. And we've been speaking about three areas, three countries, United States, Israel, and Russia. Do you agree with this statement? This is the first part of my question. And the second part of my question, whether Russia will be able to provide itself fully with information security products. We are speaking about the same countries with our clients because uh, speaking about threat intelligence platforms, uh, uh, this uh, platform was uh, produced in Russia. And when we're speaking about analogies, they are available in the United States and Israel looking at other products. Uh, they, these are the main players and suppliers of cybersecurity products. There are some separate players in Europe that I've been mentioning, like Turkey and a number of other countries, but much lesser. The main big three players, well, Russia will be able to realize this lack of uh, technological products in cybersecurity area, which currently is available. Well, I'm really interested in this cross-section. Well, let's begin with something earlier. Russia and Russian programmers in the last billion years, they are winning all the programming Olympics in the world. All the programming Olympics globally. Well, all the news that I read on this matter, a lot of Olymp Olympics are won by R programmers. So all the programmers, uh, uh, all the resumes that I read, I see the lines when they commit uh, some GitHub projects or some other projects. So they invest in open source, which unfortunately this open source uh, cannot be used in Russia to, to uh, known reasons. <clears throat> and uh, I'm 
looking at all of this and internally we do something wrong. I'm not speaking about the open source context, but we should invest in the development of local open source solutions and community around these solutions. We should look at publications of some source code, uh, some know-hows. Uh, we should give them to the world so that they can be used and push the industry for the further development. So maybe this is a secret of our development because in Russia, cybersecurity would become the first one. And from the point of view of programmers, we are ahead of everybody. How can we use this potential? That's a totally different question. Another thing that really worries me, we can provide ourselves with cybersecurity products. Uh, and this is competition because the market compared to the global market is not as big, but the quality of the products can be improved only in tough competition conditions. <clears throat> so we need a strong internal competition for the products from friendly countries, China, India, maybe Israel, who, with whom we can compare ourselves and make global level solutions. Things that I see in the recent year in the same CM segment. Recently, CMs are created like, uh, you know, cookies. Internal competition is very colossal and these uh, projects and products are being created within the year and they become very competitive and uh, I think they don't need any external intervention and there could be a small provocation uh, for our current clients or potential clients that maybe we need to stop worrying uh, about investing into Russian technology. Maybe they are uh, wet, maybe they are more mature, less mature, but we all have to invest our money time into making these and earlier or later. We'll have to do that. It's better earlier than later. And of course, we are looking at the client, and the client has very complicated objectives. And if we are not going to speak with vendors, especially cybersecurity vendors, if we're not going to close, work closely with them or getting integrated with them, then we're not going to solve their problems on such quality level he needs. That's why this close cooperation partially with the competition, some provide less information, some are trying to get closed. But if the client wants to integrate some of their products, which means make them better, then vendors will have to improve and be more competitive. So the current situation <clears throat> positively influences the information security market because on one side we see a big niche for import substitution but on the other side the, from the side of the clients there is a big demand and a big need in reliable, good quality information security products. So with the consideration of the fact that Russia enters the three global leaders as a country which knows how to develop good quality products, participating and winning in a lot of global Olympics, programming Olympics, and we do have a big foundation to be able to provide ourselves with good quality products in the area of information security and do it in such a way so that inadmissible would become impossible. So we've been speaking to Mikhail Levin, uh, development director, and Georadar and Igor Smetanin, director, uh, commercial director of our vision. 